Happy Sabbath, everyone. This is your pastor, Dr. George E. Thornton, Sr., uh, coming to you by way of my study in my home in Maryland and to bring you the message for this Sabbath of November the 7th, 2020. What a week this has been. Well, we hope we were hoping that we would have a new president by now and a new vice president, but we got to wait a few more days, but I believe it's coming. President-elect Joe Biden and President, Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. And we can send Donald Trump packing. I feel like preaching the subject entitled, Hit the Road, Jack, and Don't You Come Back No More, No More, No More. But I'll hold that to another time. But it's good to see all of you. Happy Sabbath. And we got a word for you today, and we hope that God is blessing you and what a beautiful day it is, the weather, the sun shining, and all that we are experiencing today. Even though we are still in this global pandemic, and I understand that we are reaching some spikes here and there, but, but God has kept us, and he's blessed us, and I'm so glad that um, he's still in charge. And so I come today, I want to share with you a word that I have for you. Uh, last week, I spoke on the subject entitled Three Days pointing you toward the election, um, this uh, presidential election, which took place on this past Tuesday. And I had a lot of trepidation. I was nervous and worried and thought that uh, number 45 was going to get back in for another four years and went to sleep with a little bit of uh, anxiety, but woke up. They said, weeping man, do it for a night. But joy, joy comes in the morning. We thank God that when the morning came, oh, scrappy Joe Biden, from from Stratton, Pennsylvania, uh, and that their mail-in ballots were just coming in left and right. And, and bless your heart, he is now uh, capturing Pennsylvania and Georgia and Michigan and uh, some of the other places. And he's going to reach that historical number, 207, to put him over the top. And uh, and my soul will say Amen. And so I thank God that he sets up kingdoms and he takes them down and that his will will be done. I want to come, got a good word for you today, an exciting word today on this Sabbath of November the 7th. Get all your friends and family and loved ones, tell them the preacher. It's got a word, a dynamic word today. I think it's going to be a word that's going to help all of us. We got a month and a half to go and then we'll say bye-bye to 20, the year 2020. And that's my subject today. My subject is entitled The Year 2020. So much for perfect vision. The year 2020. So much for perfect vision. I want to call your attention to a passage of scripture that will lay the foundation of what God has given to me to share with you today. It's found in the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 8. Mark chapter 8, Mark's gospel chapter 8, and verses 26 to, verses 22 rather, through 26. Mark's gospel chapter 8 and verses 22 through 26. Whatever tablet you have, whatever device you have, whatever uh, translation you have, gra ga gather your friends around around the kitchen table, the den, or the dining room, or maybe you're in your bed in your PJs, or, or maybe you're taking a walk. Or I want you to pause and catch this word today because God's got a blessing for you today. Not only just for the magazine street, Seventh-day Adventist Church for your family, but, but for all those who, who have chimed into this, to this broadcast, to this ministry, via online, you're streaming, you're hearing this preacher. I'm glad you're joining with us today. Thank God for your presence. Matthew, Mark's Gospel, chapter 8, and verses 22 through 26. And we read these words. And he came to Beth, Bethsaida, and they bring him a blind man unto him, and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand, and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes, <laughs> And put his hands upon him. He asked him if he saw saw anything. And he looked up and said, 
I see men as trees walking. And verse 25 says, and after that, he put his hand, speaking of Jesus, again upon his eyes and made him look up and he was restored and saw every man clearly. And verse 26 says, and he sent him away to his house saying, neither go unto the town nor tell it to any in the town. In other words, what he has done. I want to speak on the subject entitled the year 2020. So much for perfect vision. The year 2020. So much for perfect vision. Why don't you bow your heads with me and as we ask God to be with us as we deliver birth this word today. Father God, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We pray now that you use this preacher as I proclaim your word today and lift up the name Jesus. I pray that you would remove every distraction, every every anything that tried to come against this word today, Lord, I pray that you bind it right now, that you may have your way and that, that the people of God, wherever they may be listening to this ministry today, that they will receive a rich blessing. And because we know that you're with us right now. And so Father, use this preacher, bless your word, bless your people. For we ask it all in the worthy name of Jesus, and for his sake, let everyone say amen. Even though I can't hear you, somebody say amen. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say thank you, Jesus. The year 2020, so much for perfect vision. They say hindsight is 2020. And what, what does that mean? It means understanding a situation or event only after it has happened or developed. And so you hear the expression, hindsight is twenty twenty. And yet, when we all came into this year of 2020, and 2020s, it's supposed to mean perfect vision that we can see clearly. But who could have seen or predicted what we all came into in this year of 2020. From January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, and here we are in November, dealing with the coronavirus pandemic. Who would have thought that we would be shut down? People would be out of work, lost jobs, who, death, people dying. Who would have thought that 2020 would start out like this? They say, if I knew then what I know now, I wonder if we would have done anything differently. If you had a peekaboo, if you had a, 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 an inkling or an idea that 2020 would be like this, would you have done things differently as you move toward the end of 2019? Oh, if 2020, the year 2020 has taught us anything, here it is, brothers and sisters, it has taught us, don't make any plans without God's approval or purpose for your life because tomorrow's not promised. We don't know what a day will bring. So that's why we have to ask the Lord, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. You, you can plan, but, but, but God has the final say so. And we had no idea that we would be in a pandemic that would shut down not only this country, but the world moreover. If I knew now, knew then what I know now, would I have done things differently? Well, it is clear what Paul says that we all see through a glass darkly. 
we, we don't we don't see the whole scope. We can't see the whole thing. Only Jesus knows the end from the beginning. Only Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. He knows the end, the beginning, and he knows the middle. And so we see to a glass darkly. And so I want to talk today about what a year this has been for us. So much for perfect vision. When you consider what has happened to us, the COVID-19 fatigue we are in now, the 2020 election that we just, we, we're still trying to get over that. And, 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 and we thought that somehow it would be a landslide, that it would be a cakewalk for, for Joe Biden, but who, who knew that it would be this close? Even after all that Donald Trump has done, even after he showed his hand and, and his character and what he's about, and yet we had no idea this race would be this close. The social unrest, how divided this country is and the nation and the people. I, I've always known that that this country was racist in, in its context, but but the, but to see it come to full statue during this election week, it almost divides the country: the North versus the South. And here we are. Still waiting for the outcome of who will be the president of these United States. And bless your soul, I'm so glad that Joe Biden is leading in that area. I want to talk about in this year of 2020. I know it's almost over, but I still want to talk about it. I think that all of us, and based on our passage of scripture, we need a second touch. I know I need a second touch because I need to see clearly as to what, what, what is God up to? What is God saying to us? I, I, I need a second touch. Does, does anybody need a second touch? I need you to come and go with me to the city of Bethsaida, Bethsaida, and zoom in with me, and, and we will look at this blind man. I, I need you to zoom in with me. Here's the ID number. The ID number is Psalms 1905. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And, and here's the password. The password is Jesus, J-E-S-U-S, -S, Jesus. I want you to zoom in with me and look at this story about this blind man that Jesus healed and, and, and by way of, of giving him a second touch. In the context, Jesus has completed several trips by, the, by boat across the Sea of Galilee. And, and, and now he has returned to this city, Bethsaida, which what's interesting was the hometown of several disciples. This was their hometown. He had recently fed 4,000 people there with seven loads and a few small fish. Plus, he had dealt with the Pharisees. You know, the Pharisees were always trying to trap him and always trying to uh, paint him in a, in a corner. And, and they needed him to perform more signs to, to authenticate whether or not he was the Messiah or that his miracles were authentic. And in our passage here, Mark's gospel, he records one of the most unusual miracles our Lord has ever performed. When you look at this passage, this is one of the most unusual miracles that Jesus has ever performed. And I thought I'd bring it to you today. In the New Testament, Jesus had healed seven different blind men throughout the New Testament. Oh, we already know about you remember blind Barnabas, but where he called out Jesus' name, screaming in the dark. When they tried to make him to be quiet, and the more they tried to tell him to be quiet, the more he cried out, 
Jesus. And he was healed and received his sight. And then early in his ministry, two other blind men had asked Jesus for mercy and asking him for mercy, they received their sight as well. But then there's another classic one that most people are familiar with, the man born blind in John 9, the gospel of St. John chapter 9, when, when the question is asked, who sinned? Did this man or his parents? And I like this story. Jesus said neither, but that the glory of God might be revealed. And so Jesus created a CVS pharmaceutical store by taking clay from uh, dirt from the ground and spittle from his from from his uh, 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 lips and, and and mix it together and place it on the man's eye and the man was able to see and and everybody was questioning this man how is it that this man who was born blind now can see and. And they were questioning him all throughout town. And, 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 and even the Pharisees and the scribes got upset with the man and with his parents because no one could tell them, how is it that this man in John 9 was born blind, but now he's able to see? Ah, uh, but the man's response was, I don't know whether or not he'd be a sinner or not. I don't know if he went to Oakwood University. I don't know if he got, went to Harvard or Yale or, or the University of Galilee. I don't know where, where school he went to. I, I don't know his background. All I know is that I was blind, but now I see. Oh, that was a beautiful story. And Jesus told him, go to the pool of Shalom, and he received his sight. But however, when you come to this passage in Mark's Gospel, chapter 8, in verses 22 to 26, this is unique. This is different from all the other episodes uh, or incidents of, uh, of Jesus giving sight to people. This one is different. See, in this one, Jesus healed the blind man, but his healing was initially incomplete. Follow, follow me now. See, in, 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 this, in this story of, uh, 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 of the blind man that received the second touch, I want us to look at it from three vantage points as we follow this passage. I want to talk about the manner in which Jesus deal with this man. I want to talk about the, not only the manner, but, but the method in which he operates in dealing with this blind man. And then I want to talk about the mandate. Say it with me. The manner... The method and the mandate. And that's found in Mark chapter 8, verses 22 to 26. You will notice here, and, 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 Beth and Bethsaida, the blind man, had, had made no effort to see Jesus for himself. In this city of uh, uh, Bethsaida, he had made no effort to see Jesus for himself. Oh, see, he was brought to see Jesus along the way by some others who besought Jesus and said, can you please touch him? Oh, let me pause right there. These people who brought this blind man besought Jesus and said, can you touch him? you and I may have some people in our lives and that that we want to, I, I can't call their names out. I, I, I would, but I, I can't. I, I got to be careful and be respectful uh, uh, of the preach moment. But but I, I wish I could call out some names today for Jesus to touch them. Come on, say amen, somebody. There are some people that I know that Jesus needs to touch because obviously, obviously, something Something is clearly wrong with them, and they need a touch from Jesus. Now, now you can call those names out. Go ahead and call them out right now. I'll wait on you. Call the names out of people that you know who have who have been getting on your nerves. People who have who have been bothering you. People who have have been a distraction to you, and 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 just 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 bothering you in every way. And you want to call their names out so that Jesus might touch them. 
because clearly something <laughs> is wrong with them. Come on, say amen, somebody. Well, I want you to notice the manner in which Jesus deals with this blind man here in Mark's gospel. See, this city, Bethsaida, was already under a curse because the people did not repent when Jesus performed his mighty works among them. Jesus, based on the passage, Jesus had done a lot of work miracles in that city. But this city was a town, a city of unbelief. People did not believe. And even though all the miracles that Jesus had performed, the people still did not repent, nor did they believe. There were a lot of doubters. So notice the manner where Jesus deals with this man. Note the text says that he took him by the hand and he takes him out of the city. Uh, sometimes our surroundings can stop us from meeting with Jesus and receiving our blessing. Sometimes Jesus got to take us away from that which is familiar so that he can really do his thing with us and bless us. See, Jesus wanted to, wanted to lead him away from the unbelief. You, you got to get away from people who are always complaining, always are, are critical, people who are always suspect about stuff. Get away from those people so that you can get your true blessing. And the more you hang around them, the more unbelief they put on you and the more you start doubting the possibility of what Jesus can do. And so Jesus took this man by the hand, I like what the scripture says, and took him out of the city, this city of unbelief, this city of doubters. See, I, I've come to discover that God will remove or separate you from people who have not repented of their own sin or do not have your best interests at heart. Stop trying to get approval from people or validation from people who God already have under judgment. Stop trying to get people to, 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 to verify your, 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 your existence when they don't see the possibilities of what God is doing in your life. God has to move you out of the way of those people. He has to take you away from those people so that you may get the blessing that he has in store for you. And so that's the manner in which God, he took him out of the city. He took him away from the city of unbelief, the city of doubters, the city of those who did not repent so that he can bless him in a real special way. Oh, come on, say amen, somebody. That's, 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 that's the, the manner in which he dealt with this man. But then I want you to notice the method. Note the method in which he used to heal this man. Jesus used an unusual method To restore this man's sight. It's in the text. Yeah, it's in the text. He spat on him. I mean, he, sp he spit on the man. Let me say it again. It's in the text. He spit on the man. He has spit on his eyes. Now, let's stop right there. If Jesus has spit on us, we, we would not be able to get our healing because you, you, you spit on me? I, I know you didn't spit on me. See, the very fact that Jesus spit on the man Sometimes God will do some unusual things to bring about your blessing, your healing. He sometimes does not operate in the way you think he's going to operate. He does not come in the, the door, the front door when you think he may come. He may come in the window or the back door. He may not even come. He may come down the roof. God has a thousand and one ways of blessing us that we know not of. And so don't ever restrict God. And, 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 what he, and, and, and the manner he chooses and, and what he chooses is not really important. What is important that you get some healing. And so God spit on this man, spit, 
spit on his eyes, the scripture says. And after spitting on the man's eyes, Jesus then laid his hands on the man's eyes, touching him as the people had requested. Remember, the people requested, would you touch him? This request didn't come from the man. It came from the people. Can you touch him? And Jesus spat on him and then touched him. But watch this now. Jesus asked him if he saw anything. Now, now this, this is, let me, let, me, let me say something right here because you need to understand. I will concede that this passage raises more questions than it can answer. And, and, and I'm not going to get, get into all of the nuances of, of the questions that, that he does not give us the answer to the questions in this passage. All I know is that, that Jesus healed this man and gave him sight. And, and, and so the question may be asked, when Jesus touched him the first time, was what, 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 something wrong? Uh, uh, did Jesus lose his power? Uh, look at the text. Jesus asked the man, do you see anything? And the man's response is, in verse 24, and he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. I see men as trees walking. I, I, oh, I, I want to unpack that because I'm talking about the year 2020 uh, so much for perfect vision. He says, I see men as trees walking. Let, 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 let me unpack that for you. In other words, the man was saying, I see people, but I can't see them very clearly. They look like trees walking around. See, see, I've come to understand in studying human behavior that people are not always what they appear to be. Come on, say amen, somebody. Let me say that again. Somebody needs to hear that. People are not always what they appear to be. See, see, they give you a good look at first sight. Come on, say amen. But then later on, you become blindsided by them. They are, what, they are not what you thought they were when you first looked at them. The man said, I see them as trees walking. They are not what you thought they were. And see, what this passage is teaching us, sometimes you've got to understand your vision become blurred, your vision become hazy, and you were blinded by their charm. Come on, I'm talking to somebody in relationship. You were, were blinded by their charm, by their sweet talk, by their false and fake friendship. You thought they were in your corner? Come on, say amen, somebody. I see men as trees walking. Now, note, he says, I see them as trees. Now, this man was able to see before because he knew what trees were, et cetera, et cetera. And so he had sight before, before he lost his sight. So he said, I see them as men, as trees walking. And I thought about that. I see them as as, as men, as trees walking. You know, trees are tall. Am I right about it? But see, don't be fooled by men and women in high position or, 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 or to appear to be highly educated. The old folk were right when they said, you better, you better look before you leap. You better think twice before you act. They, 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 they understood that. Don't, don't, don't just take people based on what you see initially because what you see in this, they, they may look like what you think they are, but in, in reality, they are who they were from the first place. Wasn't it Maya Angelou who said, when people show you who they are or tell you who they are, believe them. See, what you and I must understand our vision get distorted or distracted by bifocus and blindness of appearance. Some things are, uh, and, 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 and 
And Jesus touching this man the first time, the man says, I see. He was honest. He said, I see people, but I see them as, as men walking tall, walking as trees. So Jesus then goes back and, and gives the man a second touch. Come on, you know where I'm going. He gives him a second touch. And he, he touches him again. And after he touches him again, he says to the man, after that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up and he was restored and saw every man clearly. Oh, sometimes we need a second touch because sometimes we lose our focus and we lose sight of Jesus. See, somebody said some nails need more than just one hit. Sometimes you need to take a second look. And, and, and I believe this coronavirus and all that we've gone through and, and even this election cycle and all of that we had to deal with this week, God was really saying to us, take a second look. See, see, take a second look. And I've come to realize that as I, as, as I live and move and have my being, that, that I, I want to make sure I keep my focus on Jesus because the things of this world, we can become distracted and, and we lose our focus and we lose sight of Jesus. This COVID-19, this election has made all of us take a second look at what we thought we saw and what we thought we believed in. Are we not wondering what's happening here? Look at our country. Look at our churches. Look at our culture. See, what Jesus is trying to tell us, it, it ain't about Democrats or Republicans. It ain't about the House or, or the Senate. It's about Jesus coming again. And all the signs, even the COVID-19, all the signs are pointing to, look up. Your redemption Redemption draw it nigh. Lift up. Look up. Jesus is coming again. And you can't, you can't make all these plans without God's approval or without God's purpose for your life. Because you don't know what a day will bring. You don't know what a month will bring. You don't know what a, we don't know what a year will bring. We talked about the manner he took him out of the city, that city of unbelief, that city of doubters. Get away from people who are doubters. Get away from people who are skeptics. Get away from people who are always critical. Get away from people who are always uh, 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 fault finding and pointing fingers. Get away from them so that you can have your moment with Jesus. And then the method he used spit. He spat upon the man and he touched him. And yet that initial touch, it was a conviction. But, but he had to have a second touch. Which was more than a conviction. It was something that he now says, I see all men clearly. And when Jesus touched him that second time, he was able to see clearly. See, I believe that God at some point, if you allow him and if you walk with him, he will show you. He will reveal to you those who are for you and those who are against you. Oh, I believe that with all my heart. If you walk with God and you let him take you by the hand, he will show you your enemies. He will reveal to you and you will be able to see people clearly for who they really are. But, but, that's the manner, that's the method. But I want to talk about, lastly, the mandate. Now, the mandate, the, the last part of this text blows my mind. He says to the man, now you would think that after he heals the man, that you would think that once he's healed, 
you know, you want to go and tell people what the Lord has done. But Jesus says in verse 26, and he sent him away to his house saying, neither go into the town nor tell any, tell it to any one in the town. In other words, Jesus says to this man, I don't want you to go back to that town. Yes, I've healed you. Yes, you can see. I don't want you to go back to that town. I want you to move on, move away from that. I don't want you. To... What Jesus was saying is that the reason why he didn't want him to go back to the town. See, this town, he had been performing a lot of miracles and, and yet the people still had not believed. And so, so he didn't want to become like a mere, just a miracle worker to the people. Jesus did not come just to be a, a mere miracle worker just for people to see. He came to show people the way of God. And, and at some point when people don't see God, you've got to shake the dust off your feet and move on. And so Jesus said to the man, don't waste your time going back and telling them what I have done for you because I've done all that and much more and they still don't believe. I need you. He didn't say, I don't want you to go home and tell your family. Go home and let your family see you. Go home and tell your close friend what the Lord has done. See, you can't share everything with everybody. Come on, say amen to somebody. He said, go and tell them. But I don't need you to go back to that town because really that town is done. That town is under the judgment of God. And, and you cannot hang with people that God, that God is dismissing. Uh, don't waste your time with doubters. Don't waste your time with unbelievers. There was a song in 1972 by Johnny Nash that says, I can see clearly now that the rain has fallen. And sometimes God has to remove things out of the way. Sometimes God has to give you a second touch so that you can see things clearly. Oh, initially we, we get excited about the love of God and, and about his strength, but then sometimes God has to give you a second touch to, 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 to help you to see more fully and be more committed. There was a song that we sing in our household in worship here in the Thorns household. And it was a song that I came into the Adventist church under at the at that beautiful church of Berea Temple in Baltimore, Maryland. And my younger my younger days of of of, of, of this newfound message of Seventh day Adventist and, 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 and coming out of darkness into this marvelous light. And the song that they would sing was and they sang it with them old saints sang that song with such with such uh, pathos and with such feeling, and you could almost feel like heaven was coming down. And they would sing this song, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look fully in his wonderful face. And the things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light and of the glory of his grace. I believe today somebody's asking God, Lord, I need a second touch. I need you to touch me again so that I can see you in all of this confusion, all of this noise, and all of this distraction, and all that's going on in this society, the unrest, the social unrest, the injustice, the, the racism, uh, the election, all that is happening. Lord, I need a second touch so I can know that you're still on the throne and that you're still in charge of the affairs of men. If that's your prayer today, and you want to say, Lord, I, I don't know what 2020 is going to bring, 2021 is going to bring. In fact, I don't know what, I don't know what December is going to bring in 2020. We one more month to go. I don't know what it's going to bring, but but I do know if you take me by the hand and take me away from some of this foolishness, I can see you more clearly. And I can see people for, for what they are. And so, Lord, you want to say. Like the old saying, saying, turn your eyes upon Jesus. 
look full in his wonderful face. And the things of this world will grow strangely dim in the light and in the glory of his grace. I know I need a second touch. Sometimes I got out of focus. Sometimes my, my vision became blear. And sometimes in my spiritual uh, near sight and far sight, I didn't see God and, and all of what, what was going on in my life. But now I see him. <laughs> I see him clearly and what he's trying to do. And you want to see him clearly. Won't you bow your head with me now? Father, we are so thankful, even though we see through a glass darkly. But if you take us by the hand like you did this man, this blind man, and you and you took him away from doubters and for those who who had who didn't believe and those who who was skeptic, you took him away from all of that, and you were able to to bless him in a way that only you could. You touched him the first time, but that first touch was to get him to to be committed to fact what he really sees in others, and 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 once he saw the things in others, then. You touch him again, but he was able to see things in you. Oh, Father, I thank you. I thank you. I don't know what 2021 is going to bring. I don't know what this a new administration, uh, uh, Biden and, and, and Kamala. I don't know what all that's going to, what's going to happen. But I do know who's still on the throne. And I do know who is still in charge of all of this. And the Bible says, eyes have not seen nor ears have heard the things that God has prepared for his people. Oh, Father, I thank you for the second touch. I can see clearly now. By and by when the morning comes, when the saints of God are gathered home, we'll tell that story of how we overcome. We'll understand it better by and by. We thank you in the name of Jesus for giving us a second touch. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, beloved, I thank God that he promised to give us a second touch. In fact, sometimes you may need a third touch or fourth, but just let him touch you. And when he touches you, when he sure enough touches you, you'll be able to see clearly where he's trying to take you. Well, beloved, until next time, until we come again, we're going to start a new series next week. And the series will be entitled, Come Before Winter, After the Election. Oh, I can't wait to bring this series to you as we move into the winter season. Come Before Winter the aftermath of the election. May God bless you. May God keep you until we come again next time. Stay well, stay safe, and let him touch you one more time.